Certainly it is painful for the mother and father. Certainly there'll be emotional reactions. I've never seen a case where there wasn't. You're dealing with their flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah. But let the record be clear. You have broken our hearts, yeah. but you have not broken our backs. He is considered by many to be one of the more dangerous public figures in America, often spewing racial hate and using events such as Ferguson for his own personal gain. Yet Al Sharpton has a measure of power. Does that make him someone a presidential hopeful should sidle up to and cultivate? It's a pleasure to welcome back to Bidpoint, veteran journalist who makes those inside the Beltway cringe for fear. She will expose them on a daily basis in the pages of the Washington Post. Jennifer Rubin joins us again on the show. Jennifer, pleasure to see you. Nice to be here. Let's just go ahead and start out with that. Senator Rand Paul tweeting that they don't agree on much, but he and Al Sharpton were in the Senate dining room to discuss working toward reforms that would benefit the African-American community. Okay, two sides. First, why would you even want to get close to this man who is absolutely vile in so many ways and in the opinions of so many others? Other side, wait a minute, let's bring everybody together here. It's a good idea. Show some, show some so, uh, togetherness, if you will. All right, Jennifer, go. I definitely think that Rand Paul should continue to do his outreach. However, I think he should seek out genuine, sincere, reasonable African-American leaders. There are many, many of them. Uh, Al Sharpton is a charlatan. I don't know that he represents anybody. He holds no elective office. Um, he has a background, as you pointed out, that's uh, relatively objectionable. And why Rand Paul keeps trying to do it this way rather than the right way, which is the way I think Paul Ryan has done it, John Kasich, uh, the governor of Ohio has done it, uh, other Republican politicians, um, I don't quite understand. I think he's trying to impress the mainstream media who thinks Al Sharpton is a perfectly reasonable fellow. Is that part of the, and you, the last thing you said there is a something that actually catches everybody, that Al Sharpton is a reasonable fellow. What possibly could that be based upon, and how could anybody think that when you hear so much of the discourse and so much of the bile that comes out of this man's throat? It never fails to amaze me how the left will revive people or send those bad memories down the memory hole. Um, we are around long enough to remember the Tana Brawley story. Um, he's right now he's in tax trouble with the federal government, but he has his own show on MSNBC, so he must be somebody, right? Um, this is what uh, the mainstream media has designated as a legitimate African-American leader. And I don't think Republicans should fall into this trap at all. Um, Al Sharpton is responsible for a lot of bad things and, as you said, a lot of bad language. And to associate yourself with that, I just think smacks of pandering. Um, and it really just shows bad judgment. Does this just make MSNBC a news network fraud by continuing to employ him and allow him to continue to be employed in a talk show while he is out there doing other things? I can't imagine any other network hosts being allowed to do. Exactly. And it was the same thing in the Trayvon Martin story where he was out there rabble rousing and then having his own show. I mean, I think MSNBC is no longer a legitimate news outfit. They've made pretty clear that what they are cheerleaders or uh, therapy for the left. Um, so I think if you take out of the equation that they're a legitimate news organization, I guess they can employ everybody and anybody they want. Second piece that you recently had in The Washington Post that Ted Cruz has learned absolutely nothing from the shutdown. Basically, he's, he has been defending that 2013 shutdown, and you believe that that's just another huge mistake a Republican is making. Yeah, I just think that gets him nowhere. Um, really, aside from people who are just absolute dogged fans of him, very few Republicans, let alone people outside the Republican Party, think that the shutdown was a success. Um, it wrecked the Republicans' uh, ratings. It wasn't until after the shutdown that Republicans regained their traction. And quite frankly, all the folks who supported the shutdown were the kinds of candidates who lost in the primaries in 2014. It's a sign of unseriousness. Now, I realize he led it and he's going to have to explain it. But there's one thing about acknowledging your role in something that may not have panned out as he planned. And on the other hand, touting it. Um, I think this does not help his credibility one bit. Jennifer, is he as popular as he thinks he is or is he overreaching in that area? 
Well, that's a very interesting question. There are early polls out, which I don't think are predictive of where the presidential election uh, is going to be going, but it certainly tells us where things stand now. And in fact, he's not all that popular. He has negative approval ratings. He is way back in the pack for the Republican Party. So I realize he is trying to break out, but I think this is the wrong way to break out. You don't want to distinguish yourself as someone who's irresponsible, who um, is known only for silly stunts that don't work out. And also so from your right turn blog this is the one that has a lot of people talking as well the headline the GOP should pivot away from immigration wait a minute a away from immigration this would seem to be the key element that they recently built the midterms on why get away from it well I don't think they actually ran primarily on immigration in the midterms and what I mean by that is they have to kind of choose their battles and delegate um, responsibility for this one. I think from a legal standpoint, I'll put on my old legal hat for a moment, <laughs> the governors actually in the states have the best legal action and they should pursue that with all vigor and Republicans should cheer them on. But that's, I think, a better role for the governors. Secondly, I think they should pass a measure of censure when the new Congress comes in. And third of all, I like the proposal by Tom Price to essentially fund the rest of the government, but not this immigration part. But beyond that, it is very important for them not to get caught in this trap, I think, that the president has laid and to go forward with their very popular positive agenda on energy, on a health care alternative, on the economy. That's where they are going to connect with the American people. And they shouldn't be diverted and distracted from doing that. So yes, by all means, combat this move. It's bad law. It's bad policy. But the, by the same token, they can't let this be the entirety of their 2015. I only got about 30 seconds left, but isn't it very simple to say that they just need to start being positive? Stop going back and doing the negative on immigration. Here's what we're going to do. Here's why we make it better and leave all the rest of it behind because I think people are Oh boy, do I agree with that. And there's a lot that they can do. Um, there are many bipartisan measures within the Senate on things like H-1B visas, certainly on border security, certainly on E-Verify. There could be a lot of small deals and I think that's how it's going to have to get done. And you know, if the president wants to veto it, let him veto it. And in 2016, Republicans will run on the premise that the Democrats are the party of no, um, that they can't take yes for an answer. Even when bipartisan approval comes out of Congress, uh, the guy in the White House still isn't pleased. It again is called The Right Turn Blog at WashingtonPost.com. It's a great read every single time I pick it up and get there. A lot of good writing as well. Jennifer, thanks so much for your time. A very happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. All right, take care. Short pause. We return with the facts about what is called the most genocidal phenomenon of modern times. It's here on Midpoint. There's a sense of calm in Ferguson today, this after mostly peaceful protests last night. But those demonstrations triggered rallies all across the country. Protesters in New York City blocked an entrance to the Lincoln Tunnel. And in Oakland, activists stopped traffic on highways. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a stent placed in her heart today. Doctors, doctors discovered a blockage in the 81-year-old's artery after she experienced some discomfort last night. And a winter storm wreaks havoc on Thanksgiving travelers. Forecasts say the Northeast could see up to 12 inches of snow. And now several airports are experiencing major weather delays. And it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but a New York family is ready to reclaim the record for the most Christmas lights. The home is a major attraction and showcases some 600,000 lights. I'm Francesca Page. We'll have another update coming your way at the top of the hour.